T Fitz back again. Oh, mm, today I thought I'd give y'all a little story because, like, golly, I have come to realize that one of the reasons I do this, as you know, I completely recognize my own mortality. And <clears throat> God forbid, you know, something happened, you know, we're not promised tomorrow. I have a little record of something left for my boy to get to know his dad because uh, I mean as it is at this moment I barely get to see him God willing that will change however something happens between here and then this is part of your dad right here boy so I thought I'd tell y'all about my first marriage how it started where it ended we're gonna talk about woo, love being young youth Oh, growing up and going through some crap. I remember I was about 19 years old. I went to this diner with my buddy and his old lady and her best friend. And I kind of caught a little crush on her best friend at that diner. But time started progressing a little bit and I found myself completely enamored with my buddy's old lady. So I go up to him because he's kind of like uh, a player or whatever you call him where, you know, lots of old ladies. And I was like, man, look, mm, I really got this thing for your old lady. I would like to try to go after her, I guess you call it. But, you know, I'm going to be straight with you because I ain't going around messing with nobody's old lady. And I remember he told me, uh, golly, what did he say? He said, well, I'll tell you what go for it or, or do it if you think you can that was it if you think you can do it feel free and i was oh all right so i started hanging out with her we kind of got a little thing for each other at one point it got a little physical not all the way physical and i went and i kind of set them both down and i said hey look your old lady and me are kind of becoming a thing and i told her you got to basically make a choice because I ain't going to sit here and watch y'all two together because that kind of sucks. Looking back, I was an idiot. Regardless, at that point, she was like, well, I like old other dude better. And I was like, well, fine. I ain't talking to you no more. Don't contact me. You're dead to me. And then, all of a sudden, she very interested in me. Now, looking back and thinking about, like, human psychology... Maybe it's one of them like, you know, you want it if you can't have it things. And I told her, you cannot have it. Man, where would my life be had I not made this decision? Because I was like, well, all right, then we're together. Anyway, I moved. And well, that's when I quit my job and decided to concentrate on college. She's a couple years younger than me. And I had been in college for about a year and a half at this point. Now I'm 20. And we both moved in together very quickly, or she started staying over a whole lot very quickly. She had lots of problems with her mother. They didn't get along this, that, the other. And they're, they're close now from as far as I know. I hadn't talked to this woman in 11 years. Uh, and when we left there, her and her mother were very close. Her mother a good lady. Regardless, uh, she was 18 years old and got pregnant. And I didn't, I'm not the one that forced this, but we kind of came to this decision and she's, I can't make 10 years old. I can't have no baby. And I didn't know how we'd support it. So we went with the other option. I kind of regret that to a degree these days, although you can't really go back in history and change time, you know, moved in with my mom, lived in her den, made a bedroom out of her den, stayed there for a while, started concentrating on school. I was going for computer science and she was an artist uh, going for fine arts. Ended up moving into an apartment and then a mobile home. Body out of years went by. We were together, you know, spits and spats, but I thought we was cool, you know. And I forget exactly what problems we started having, but I was pretty much fed up with her. She's probably fed up with me too. And. I was like, you got to go. I'm done with this. Oh, and I remember something else. Like from the time, like when I first started dating her, she had a body. Man, a body to die for. It was a beautiful woman. Well, 
she started gaining a little bit of weight. Now, me too, for the record, like, at this moment, I'm probably about 40 pounds lighter than I was back then. We constantly ended up concentrating on our health a whole lot for a while, and now I, I've somehow maintained it. So, she goes and talks to my mentor, and he's like, I'll tell you a way to get that man back. You need to start seeing another man. Well, that's what she did. And I guess it worked. Because I remember by the month of feuding, and she done moved out back to her mama's. And she come over one day and I said, I'll tell you what. No more of this bitching at me. And no more running me and not a lot of law. I'll put a ring on your finger. I'll book us a flight to Vegas right now and we'll go get married. And she was like, okay. And I was like, well, okay. So I booked a flight to Vegas for about a month later. It landed on the day that her mother was having a Mardi Gras party. We go to Vegas, get married. Her mom's like, y'all supposed to be at this party. Where are you at? And, <laughs> oh, because I called her. And I said, well, I just took your daughter to Vegas and married her. And she's all like, no, you didn't. And I'm like, yeah, I totally did. And she said, well, give me the name of the hotel and the room number, blah, blah, blah. So I give her that, and I give her the number. She calls, gets the room. And then, boom. I told you so, woman. At this time, you know, we were living together, and I'm having to basically bust my butt in school. I'm getting up in the morning. I go to school. I'm at school all day. And I'm normally having to spend till about 2, 3 a.m. working on projects. And she'd always be like, well, come to bed. Like, I can't because, like, I have all these projects I have to do. I'm trying to finish this freaking degree. And... She'd sit there and she'd get projects, which was like, uh, you know, make a piece of art. She'd wait till the day before and then knock that crap out. Regardless, I graduated. And I really wanted to go to graduate school, but she had another year to go. So I caught a job at the school and I continued to take courses. Another year went by. We we're going to apply to graduate school. I applied. Lots of places. I wanted to do electrical engineering, and I did get my minor in electronics, but they didn't offer an engineering program for electronics at my university. Well, I couldn't get in nowhere. Um, and she got into Rhode Island School of Design, which is a really, really high-ranking school, like Ivy League, and for landscape architecture. And we're going to go move to Rhode Island. I said, well, I'll tell you what. I'll put you. I'll work. Because I had got a job before that. I forgot about that. Uh, com computer program and not just at the school. And I'll put you through graduate school. When you get out, put me through graduate school. So go into a bunch of debt. I talked to my job. I'm like, I got to quit or let me work from home. They're like, uh, you can work from home and have a raise. So I was like, that's cool. Go into all that debt, move up to Rhode Island. She had to do a summer program. And I remember I had telling her, this is going to be a lot more work than you think it is because I have done been doing that kind of work and it's really you're going to have to bust your lady balls. And I guess she thought she knew what that meant but didn't because after the summer program she was like, this is way too much work. I don't want to do this. And I was like, dang, now we're in a ton of debt. So she got to go meet her friend. I had to go to Austin for some reason. And I was like, I'll tell you what, I'm sick of living in places that aren't my own house. While you're down there, find us a house. I'll figure out some way to get it, which this was back right before the housing crisis. I mean, they'd give any, you know, Tom, Dick, Harry, Schmuck a house. And so we moved to Austin. Cause that's like the software capital of the South. I knew I'd get a good job there. I kept working for this one job. And then I finally, in about a year later, got another job and like doubled my income. And blah, blah, blah. You went at career path, blah, blah. So, we finally got us, we went to this credit solutions thing, and I finally got us out of all this debt. And right about that, minor correction, uh, she did end up helping us out, get out of that debt. Uh, it took a while, but she became a substitute teacher, and then rolled that into a teaching certificate, and did go get a decent job as an art teacher. So, uh I, I said that I got us out of all the debt, but I need to really give her, you know, credit where credit's due. Same time, she decides 
messing around on me and stuff, which for a while we did kind of have an open relationship, but like a we mutually consensual open relationship in the same room. And I would not recommend that to you if you are thinking about it. Oh man, and around this time, she really started like losing a bunch of weight and looking good. And God, again, you know, she, she's beautiful, but even with a little bit of weight on her, but golly, man, you're with your old lady and she ends up going and losing a whole bunch of weight and looking good and feeling, mm, I don't know if that's a red flag or not, but every time that I've been in that situation, that woman is like, uh, F you, I'm out, regardless. Man, there was one time we went to this restaurant and I had a couple of beers. I mean, like a couple, like two. And I get real sick. I don't know why. Well, this kid earlier had asked me, what would, you know, you want for me to be able to sleep with your wife? And I was like, man, I don't even want to talk about that right now. I'm just here to have a good time. Go home, go to bed. Well, anyways, he turned out to be the guy serving my drinks. I get real sick. And I'm like, you got to take me home. I, I remember crawling out of the car. We didn't live far from this place. Crawling out of the car. Crawling to the doorstep. Two beers. Crawled into our little half bath. Puked all over the place. Crapped myself. I thought I was dying. She leaves me there. Goes and picks this dude up. I didn't know where she was going. Brings him back. I had crawled upstairs going to sleep. And sleeps with him. Downstairs. On our couch. Anyway, turned out that I kindly deduced everything. This dude had dosed me with a heavy dose of GHB in those drinks, and I knew them daggum drinks tasted funny. Man, that still hurts me to think about it to this day. So I, there's one point, she basically kicked me out, or I kicked myself out. I forget if it was consensual or not. But she's running around on me all the time. And I tell you this, while we were a married couple, well, I can't really say I never ran around on my old lady, but I did one time. And that was after she had done a bunch of run around on me. Then she went back to visit her mom. And I was like, well, I'm going to get me a little bit of payback. And I did go meet somebody. And then she come back and I told her, because I'm also a pretty honest person. I was like, hey, while you were gone, I went and did this. And she was like, no, you didn't. And I was like, okay. But really, I never really cheated other than that. But before there was any big problems and a bunch of, you know, that other stuff happening, I never ran, ran, ran around with my old lady. And I moved into an apartment. And this is right after I'd done got us out of all this debt. And I'm like, finally, we can start building something. Well, not anymore, because now i got to go pay for an apartment. I went and lived there for a while and finally I'm going over and I had written this letter that was basically like, I am done with you. I'm absolutely done with you. I'm getting all my crap. I'm gone. Don't talk to me. Like the first one that I wrote her years ago. We were together for 10 years. At the same time, she handed me a letter that was saying like, I'm sorry for all this. I want to be a good wife. I love you. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, dang. All right. So we got back together. Another two years wasted after that moment. Ended up, she's like, now we're totally getting divorced and you can carry your ass. Uh, I packed all my crap up, moved in with Buddy back in Shreveport, Louisiana. Then I ended up moving to Florida, blah, blah, blah. And get this, like I find out, okay, we done in divorce, I done moved. I find out she's immediately with some other dude. Y'all ever hear of that, like, they talk, things called monkey branching, where they got one hand on, you know, the next branch before they let go of the previous branch? And, I mean, this is like right after. And she swears, like, no, I wasn't seeing this dude or nothing. This happened like a week after you left. As far as I know, she married that feller, and they're still together to this day. No, uh, more power to you. Anyway, this divorce, I remember I told her like, well, I guess I ain't paying for the house. I ain't paying for it, I'll tell you that. I sure as heck ain't paying for it. I ain't paying for nothing. So what I'd do is I'd live here until they foreclose a some bitch 
and I'd take everything out of here because I had done a lot of rehab work on that house. I'd, I'd take everything out of here and y'all, apparently that's what she did. She moved like three houses down. She took the back door and had the doggy door in it off the hinges, moved it down to like a couple houses over, put it on the new house she rented, and then left just the house open. And that place was a wreck from what I understand. I never saw it. This is all secondhand information. Then she ends up goes and buys another place there and must have somehow used my credit information because for years it showed that I had applied for and gotten a mortgage that I never applied for. Don't know how that works. Divorce was pretty easy. I told her, I'll tell you what, you want to divorce me, you're going to pay for it. I don't want nothing. We don't got nothing. I will just leave. So it was pretty simple. We didn't really have that much of nothing. I took my stuff and I left. She did go and like pay for one of them non, golly, both times I've been divorced in Texas. Ain't that something? I ain't even really from Texas, although I consider myself a Texan. Anyway, she paid that like 240 bucks for a, uh, I don't know, consensual, non-contested divorce. I signed the paperwork. Get this one though. Well, I signed the paperwork. I put a dog bone in there for our dog because she kept my dogs and my two cats, and I love them cats. Oh, I miss them kitties, and they're probably all dead now. Mm. Anyway, and I got me this clone of Willie kit, and I cloned that Willie, and I also put it in there with my dog bone, and then divorce papers, and sent it back to her. We hadn't talked since. I don't know, no, no, we did because I went to visit her mama one time, and my nephew come running in, and he goes. Uncle Thomas, Uncle Thomas. And I'm like, what? And he's like, Aunt Brittany just pulled up. You better hide. And I was like, oh, dang. And then she come and walked through there. And I was like, hey. And she was like, hey. I forget. I said something rude, but like not in a rude voice. That's the last time we spoke or communicated uh, that I know of. Anyways. Kind of a crappy story, but that's the story of my first marriage and divorce. I think I divorced when I was coming up on 30. No, I think I was 29. I got divorced. Mm, 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 mm. Well, you know what? You ain't getting them years back. And you know what? You definitely did not learn from your mistakes. Anyways. Don't know if this helped any of y'all out, but it definitely happened. I guarantee it. Love each and every one of you. It's T Fitz, and I'm out.